everyone uh, welcome to part two uh, so part one was just really setting up the virtual machine uh, and then successfully logging onto it from now what I'm gonna do is the next step really is um, obviously what we want to do is we want to now install Active Directory uh, Active Directory will give us a domain so if you've never installed a domain before really what Active Directory does is it kind of restricts access to all of your company's resources so if i have a domain of let's say your company is called kudu for example and i have a domain of kudu that means all of the resource and all of the access to those resources is controlled by the domain so you almost got to think of it like uh i guess like how would you put it um it's almost like an administrative officer that controls what you're allowed to see what you can do um, who you allowed to do it with so really it's a security officer active directory and uh, Microsoft released a fantastic uh, new version of active directory called Azure active directory um, which I'd love to do a show about I mean there's some amazing stuff in there and, and I think it's really gonna uh, yeah it was a really smart move on Microsoft's behalf uh, so but ultimately that's for another time let's put some music back on um, there we go okay so like I said, we logged in the last end of the last episode. To do it, you go into Azure Connect, or otherwise I've got it over there. I can double click, but I've already logged in. So let's open the server. So here's our blank server. It's fresh, it's clean, ain't nothing on it. So what I want to do is actually, is I want to install Active Directory. So I want to open Server Manager, the dashboard. There'll be a bunch of error messages here, there are, I mean this is a fresh install, so I wouldn't stress too much about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add roles and features. So, hit that. Now this is just, you know, typical Microsoft, they just drown you in information. So let's just skip this page by default the next time. Uh, most people don't read it, yeah. It's your call if you want to read it. Okay, we're going to do a role based or feature based installation. Uh, we're gonna select a server, cool, Kudu Europe, that's the guy. And we're gonna do Active Directory Domain Services. It's gonna install a whole bunch of other stuff that uh, complement that. So yeah, we're grand with that. We're gonna say Add Features. Click Next. Click Next. Next again. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna install it. So what it's going to do now is it's actually going to install all of those features that you can see here. So Active Directory Domain Services, Group Policy Management, Remote Server, all of these wonderful things, right? So we've got a bit of time here while installed, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go through my knowledge of them. So Active Directory Domain Services, that enables people to kind of log in, log out of the domain accessing. Group Policy, so you can actually set policy on different artifacts. So. Let's say, for example, I want to disallow all users from installing software. I can do that by a group policy. My personal opinion, it's a bit controversial, but restricting people to do anything uh, almost seems short-sighted. Ultimately, you want your users to be curious and, hey, they're going to break things anyway, you know, but ultimately you learn from breaking. So restricting, I mean, you hear these crazy stories of you going to companies and they restrict users from installing any software it's like how you expect people to learn and, and yeah but anyway that's my opinion so cool that's installed we're going to close up now what happens is this like notification pops up right so that's i mean yeah the ui interface means obviously warning or something's up right so we click that and we're going to promote the server to a domain controller so what a domain controller is that's a security guy right so the domain controller is really you know that big beefy bouncer at the club that tells you whether you're allowed coming in or not you know like so let's do that okay i'm going to call this domain kudu just because i'm going to be using the server for some of my administrative and financial functions uh, oh, and I need to put like a network address, so like uh, like a domain, right? So, so domain is like a .com, a .au, uh, .co.nz, .co.za, uh, .org. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here that like some people will probably like the more technically minded will, will like 
nitpick over i mean some people recommend using net some people this or that i mean for me the thing is i've got a kudu um i own the domains for kudu so like i own the dot org the dot com dot au the dot uh, cloud so i don't want something to ever interfere with that ultimately these servers shouldn't ever communicate but just to be safe i'm gonna put a dot net okay which it's not allowing me to uh, oh, because I want to add a new forest, not to add a domain controller. So we don't have a domain controller, so we're creating a whole new forest. So forest is like, uh, how do I explain a forest? So, like a forest would be like a collection of domain controllers. Uh, yeah, so we don't have a forest. So now we want a root domain name, so I'm just going to put kudu.net. I mean... A lot of these concepts you can go in and kind of dig into and, and explore and stuff, but really, I mean, yeah, it's your core how deep down you want to go in that knowledge. Ultimately, what you want to know is a domain controller controls things and it, it, it it's going to be used to set up all of your user and system accounts. Um, you can dig a bit deeper, but if you have enough knowledge to know how to do those things, you should be grand for probably 90% of implementations. Cool, I'm gonna click next. This takes a bit of time. Oh, it's a bit quicker than I anticipated, but nah, you'll see this thing will go over and over. And then eventually it'll allow us to set up a password. So this password really, really you should write it down somewhere. I mean, I've got, like for me personally, the way I normally use passwords is I have like an overarching administrative password that very, very few people have access to. And then that's used for all system accounts. Uh, and then I kind of have like different levels of passwords for, for staff. Um, it, it's your call, right? I mean, the problem with creating a password for every single thing is ultimately you got to keep a, a log of those passwords. Uh, and then you might use something like password manager or, or some form of password manager software. And ultimately, the, yeah, the administrative burden grows. So uh, sometimes when the administrative burden grows, people become slack, people kind of make more mistakes. They share those passwords around, everyone gives it to each other. And then the whole point of that security is ruined. So, I mean, my thoughts personally is it is, is simple, right? So if it's simple to maintain, it's less likely to uh, have a lot of holes in it and people are less likely to take shortcuts and uh, yeah, potentially allow hackers or prying eyes in. So that's the way I approach it. Um, yeah, ultimately it, it, it's most organizations will have their own policy. Some of those policy, most organizations policies aren't actually formalized. It's just a loose, loose password policy. Um, I really do think uh, companies should have a password policy. I mean, <laughs> like, you, you know, we live in a digital age and, and, and people are like basically leaving their house open while all these criminals are in the street. So my opinion is, is if you're doing an implementation and you're a consultant for a third party customer and they don't have a password policy, at least as a consultant, tell them your password policy and ask them if they're willing to adopt it. Um, I, I, I think it benefits consultants, it benefit, benefits end users, it benefits the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, ultimately ERP, and that's what Dynamics AX is, is is a collection of highly confidential information detailing the financial transactions of a company's life cycle. Um, you don't want people having access to that information. Um, you, you know, not external people, not competitors. So password is, unfortunately, we still live in an age of passwords and I think we're gonna be for the next foreseeable future. So it's, it's good to protect yourself. Um, Damn, this thing is taking long. I'm gonna pause it, yeah? Um, and then I'll resume it once it's finalized this processing, yeah? Okay, cool, we're back. Damn, yeah, some of this stuff takes longer. And, and that's kind of what you gotta to understand too, is like, infrastructure is not sexy. It's boring, there's a lot of waiting around. Um, yeah. Uh, but ultimately it's an essential skill. So cool, we're gonna ignore that message. I don't care too much about that. It'll come up like uh, the server will actually come up and, and determine a net bias domain name. Again, I mean, you can research this, go to Wikipedia, go
go have a look and stuff, knock yourself out, but I mean, you don't need to have that. You don't need to know what a net bias name is. It's not going to be a major gap in your knowledge. Okay, cool. So now we go to the next stage. Um, so look, I mean, ultimately, if you look here, it's keeping all of my logs and stuff on the C drive. So this is a little dangerous. So let's say C drive gets corrupted and breaks, then I lose all my logs of my Active Directory and then basically the whole system goes down because there's no security on anything, so there's no one to control the access. That's super risky. Um, I would never do that in a production system. Um, this isn't a production system. This is just a little developer box or single server box that I want to maybe demo to clients or play around with or try a few things. This isn't a production system, so some of the decisions I make aren't gonna be best practice. So um, it's important to note them, but hey, I mean, ultimately you're gonna be in charge of. In AX, there's there's a lot of decisions whereby you know you might not be able to make best practice decisions. Um, this is probably one of them. Some you, you know, and sometimes that's gonna be due to the client wanting a certain thing, and that that certain thing goes against Microsoft's best practices. It happens, this, this is the world we live in, but yeah. So cool, we're gonna go next. Now we're all good, happy with all of this. We're gonna go next. Now it's gonna do prerequisites checks. So it's basically gonna check through all of the stuff I've done, see what the story is, see if it finds anything wrong, right? Um, and then if it finds it wrong or any warnings, it's gonna then give me a notification. So this can also take a bit of time. So I'm gonna pause it again, Let's see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back up and running. All the prerequisite checks pass successfully. Click install to begin. There's a few warnings here. I'm not too bothered about them. Uh, so let's install. So now it's gonna install. This is also gonna take a bit of time. So I think it, it might be a good idea in this time to actually show you why password protection is such a good idea, right? So let's go to Reddit. And if you look here, Yahoo discloses a hack of 1 billion accounts. That means someone's hacked in a billion accounts. Now this isn't for, you know, good purposes. Someone's going to use that those accounts, whether that's for credit card theft or whatever it is. Ultimately, that information now is in the hands of people with, for all accounts and purposes, malicious intent. Now if we even open this and you go look at Yahoo, I've got a few ad blockers and odds and ends security things. On Yahoo's official, well it's Tumblr actually, there's unsafe scripts. I mean, it's just a little things, but you, you, you need to educate yourself to a lot of these things, you know, like security is important. Um, okay, so this is gonna go again. Again, I'm gonna pause it. This thing takes forever normally. Um, yeah, actually, I mean, I think this is good enough for now. Yeah, I mean, ultimately what this does is this just installs it and then you've got to restart your uh, server. So what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll do all of that and then in the next episode, I'll show how you now have to log in with your domain and username to get in. But I think that's grand for the first or for this episode. Um, cool. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time. Ciao.